Hello, 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 hello. It's good to see you. Say hello. Welcome to the Husky Hockey Podcast, your number one resource for all things Husky Hockey. I'm Weldy, sitting here with Andrew, and uh, we had a bye week, uh, so no game to recap, no series to recap, uh, but we got uh, we got the Badgers uh, going to Wisconsin, which is not normally a place uh, St. Cloud uh, is able to go ever since the conference split, because uh, let, let's just say that they... They like to have a little bit of shenanigans when it comes to the scheduling in Wisconsin. Yeah, not 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 being allowed. I guess the the ban is lifted for St. Cloud. We we can enter the state of Wisconsin. Granado comes in and is like, oh, it's okay, and then uh, it, it's okay to get trounced at home to lesser schools that Barry Alvarez uh, hated so much that he formed his own conference and left. Yes. Only to get trounced no matter what anyway, because uh, Wisconsin has been terrible. That's true. And the early results, at least one week in, uh, I'm not sure if that's going to change this year. Uh, <laughs> I was um, on Twitter. Uh, Nate Wells uh, is a uh, reporter, did some work for The Athletic, uh, Gopher State uh, on Twitter. So good follow. He... Mm, was uh, replying to a uh, college football um, kind of take about how Texas is back, like back, kind of back Texas, who used to be kind of a big powerhouse, and now they're coming back into the fold and, you know, being the college football power they once were. Um, and he was like, who do you think would be the best college hockey equivalent like if you could think of a team that it was dormant and then would come back and if they'd be dominant again who would it be and i think wisconsin would kind of fit that mold if wisconsin is able to turn it around you know in the in the next couple of years you know i i mean what since the beginning of the big 10 i think they they won the big 10 that year right and then after since then it's kind of dropped off or have they been good more recently than that? I don't even remember. I, I, yeah. I think they won it the first year yeah, and then they had the Cole Caulfield year and that's the only tournament appearances that they've made. I'm almost certain about that. And only, so that would be only one tournament appearance for Granado himself because Eves was still there when they, when they got into the big 10 took a couple of what five win seasons for him to, to slide off into D3. Um, but Granado has not been doing much better. And I believe he was even extended last year. Like I think last year there was some talk about, is he going to get fired after a 10 win season last year? But it, even if he wasn't extended, he's still under contract for a while there. And I mean, you could always fire him. I mean, they, that's what they did with their football coach. What last week? Their their yeah. their overall athletics uh, ha have seemed to be taking a dip, really. Other than women's hockey, uh, which still is is obviously a, a national power, but their football's down and has been down over the last few years. Their basketball team is, you know, okay. They'll make a tournament here and there, but they're not making the fi final their, four. Their basketball team every once in a while was like a surprise, oh, yeah. like. They they'd be in the elite eight sometimes, or well, they they were or, in the final four, like probably that around that when the Big Ten hockey started around that 2014 year that when the Frank the Tank uh, I can't remember his last name, but he was like their star player, and I think they made they made might have made the title game. I don't think they won it, but but yeah, so it seems like across the board and uh, their their athletics is is somewhat down. I, to get to Nate's question, I think we have a lot of kids. Frank Kaminsky. Kaminsky, there we go. Um, there we go. I wonder what happened to him. I don't know if he's still, if he flamed out. I don't really follow the NBA, but I don't, I can't remember hearing his name any times, you know, recently. So maybe his pro career stalled. But this is not a uh, Badger basketball podcast. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the brass tacks. Getting back to the question, I think there's a lot of candidates for teams 
that could pull a, uh, what you say, a Texas football. I, yeah. I'm not sure if we've, we've had the Texas football re- revival yet, though, from any college team. Because there's uh, several mm-hmm. you know, tr- traditional powers, in quotes. Michigan State, you get a lump in there. They've been pretty irrelevant for the entirety of the Big Ten uh, Hockey Conference. Even got like BU and BC, they've made some tournaments here and there over the last few years, but nowhere near sort of the heights of those programs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've got some candidates there. It just doesn't seem like anyone has really taken the reins and, and, and came back with, with the vengeance. I mean, at, you know, Michigan had some lower years there, but I, I'm not sure if you can call them like, a, you know, I don't think that they really bottomed out to the extent yeah. that the question was kind of saying. And so I'm, I'm struggling to think of a team that's really pulled off a, you know, a, a long period of dormancy and then uh, we're back moment. So yeah. I guess we'll put, put a pin in that. Yeah. If um, I think if uh, Maine ever gets there, I think, uh, and I think that's that would one. be like a Nebraska type revival. Yes. I mean that they've been dormant for way longer. We well, can even go with the conference with Colorado College. You know, we forget how good of a team that was. Basically, year in, I year don't, out. I don't forget Peter Sanya and yeah, Sterling and going to national yeah. title games and Frozen Fours. Almost every year they were in the tournament for about twenty years, and and they they've seen far from that sort of peak. Um, so yeah, there's you know Miami. You can even throw them in there. I mean, they were kind of a, a perennial tournament team in the CCHA, but obviously yeah. have not picked it up uh, in recent years. Did I ever tell you the story about uh, when I was at the the Frozen Face Off and I sat next to a bunch of Colorado college parents? And you're playing the dollar game. I think you told me that yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. All right. I did. So I was um, for our listeners. Um, because, you know, obviously this was just a setup to tell it again. Um, <laughs> we were playing the dollar game, passing out some dollars uh, kind of back and forth for the um, for every every stoppage, two dollars for every goal that's scored. And uh, basically, we just have this uh, college, uh, Colorado College uh, parents right behind us. Just awesome to talk to. They were a lot of fun, but. You know, they were talking about uh, their scheduling and because Colorado College, you only take one class at a time. So it's a little bit interesting where you take one class for like two weeks or something. But that's like all the class. That's all your studies are really focused on. And, um, you know, you know, it's a very elusive, uh, elusive may not be the right word. Selective. like, Like. yeah, exactly. Because I think the enrollment is fifteen hundred. It's You're right. something incredibly small. Um, but <laughs> we were talking. You know, I was saying, you know, I'm barely able to afford to even talk about Colorado College, much <laughs> much less attend it. <laughs> the guy just laughs and goes, "Yep, same here." <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we're there is because of the hockey. So, um. It was, uh, yeah, but it was, uh, it was, it was a good time, and uh, they they were fun people, and probably the best interaction that I've had with a a a group of fans for a specific fan base, and I know it's skewed because it's a small sample size, but like when I went to Denver and I got really annoyed by some Denver fans uh, who, uh, you know, kept chirping at me on Saturday night after Friday night, we shut them out. So I don't know, like Denver fans rub me the wrong way. Obviously I don't have to talk about really any other fan base, I guess Omaha. I've not really had any bad interactions with them uh, or Miami, but any interactions with Miami for, for that matter. But, it's, well, and, uh, and Denver fans. Colorado College so far are 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 near the top because of that one guy. So he, yeah. he was. Yeah, I was gotta say. And his know. wife was not happy he was playing the dollar game. I'll tell you that much. I was gonna say you you had to go to Denver to find to interact with some Denver fans because that's also that's true. all that's the only place that you can find Denver fans. Uh, 
So and really, there's that, only like five or six there. That's true. That's this is true. I'm gonna have to. I'll be able to f- find that out firsthand here. Some more firsthand knowledge when I go to Denver. Coming up, it's like three weeks. I do have a theory, and I guess we'll get into that maybe in a little bit. But, uh, you know, Denver now number one in the poll, North Dakota number three. Uh, they play in a few weeks. I don't know. I'm thinking that's going to be a one versus two matchup. North Dakota and Denver, they play. North Dakota and Denver. Well, I know the St. Cloud it, series is the first series of the year for St. Cloud, I would assume, also for Denver. But um, but they must play I'm checking right after. That weekend after, when I did, I I I realized I heard that Denver they didn't do their uh, banner raising. Usually that's like the first weekend of the year. Um, they're doing they're holding off until they play Providence. I was gonna I was thinking if I, when I, when I heard that they weren't doing it right away, I'm like I don't really know if I want to be there for a, a banner raising ceremony at Denver. Uh, but at least the, the Providence uh, faithful will be if they travel there, they'll have to put up with that. But uh, but yeah, you they've might be a, right. You might be right with that one two matchup. That's a good call. Yep, they've got a series against Miami before as well. They oh they so, played the they, they we've got conference games the first or that last weekend in October even last weekend of October. Yep, uh, Denver plays Miami. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so that's St. Clouds. Uh, conference opener, at least. Maybe it's not for everybody yeah. else, but so I—I I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope uh, St. Cloud's able to knock uh, Denver off its perch uh, by then. I—I um, I mean, Providence, I guess, might have a chance. I can't imagine UMass or Miami, but sleeping on UMass. Yeah, a little. Bit. I think the, I, th- I think UMass will will win one of those two this weekend. We shall see, though. I guess Denver looked good, not great. In in the icebreaker, I know that we'll we'll do some going around the the country, yeah. and we want to talk about St. Cloud first. But I, I, I mean, I, I like I like UMass fact- tied AIC. Who ties AIC? I mean, come on, like the bees. No self respecting team would ever tie or lose to AIC. This is true. Uh, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah, uh, that should be an easy sweep there for the, for the piles. <laughs> anyway, yeah, <laughs> we talk about how we want to, you know, front load with St. Cloud State. Let's preview Wisconsin right away. And we, we get off talk track about all these other we loser get side, teams. We get and... sidetracked. <laughs> Here I go on this little weird tangent. All right, Tony Granado, career record ninety two one oh eight and sixteen. It's better than so... I would have thought, even. Um, I was doing some research about Wisconsin uh, o- over the weekend. I I, I kind of was, you know, we mentioned ten wins last year, a couple of those overtime wins too, so it's a little even deceiving. And I guess I didn't realize just how bad Wisconsin was last year. Um, in goals per game, I, in, I got I got some numbers for you first. Goals per yep. game, sixth worst in the country. In goals allowed, sixth most. So bottom 10 in both of those categories. Generally not a good recipe for uh, winning hockey games. The only other two teams that were bottom 10 in both of those categories, St. Thomas and Dartmouth. Again, generally not a good (laughs) recipe for success when you're favorably compared to St. Thomas and Dartmouth. So this was... a, a Bad team that couldn't score and gave up a bunch last year. And as I mentioned, the early results from this year not being great, swept at Ohio State this past weekend. They included a 3 nothing lead on Saturday that they coughed up, ended up losing in, in regulation, two regulation losses at Ohio State. And then we don't really count it, but it's another data point, losing at home to, the, uh, to Lakehead which I would think is some sort of Canadian college. So again, if it's a fish, I don't want to eat it. (laughs) And the Badger hockey team doesn't want to eat it either because they lost to them. Uh, Do you ever think it's weird that, you know, lake food, like we don't call it lake food if we have like walleye or anything like that. 
like oh, like, I don't know. Okay, like see i was wondering like like see, seafood, seafood. Yeah. like 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 if you're having crab you have you know i'll have some seafood and no, you don't have lake food. I think lake the reason food doesn't sound as yes, good. That, that that's the reason line. that we don't call it yeah. lake food is because lake food sounds disgusting. Uh, Isn't it? Uh, Why do I want to eat walleye so bad? I don't know. I'm I'm not Catholic, but I love a good fish fry. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I back just, to last year. I remember like our our recap of Wisconsin. Was w- just trashing how was, bad was that basically team was. one one word wolf. That was the yeah. that was the review of Wisconsin, and it was this team is going to struggle to get ten wins, which I think we nailed that one. Mm-hmm. I mean, we St. Cloud won five one and four one, and even those games, it it wasn't that close. Yeah, both games. Like, St. Cloud kind of like, took the foot off the gas in the third period in both of those games because they were up by so much. Uh-huh. And so, and as far as and, you know, getting you know transitioning from last year to this year, I mean, it's Wisconsin. They're a Big Ten school, so they're going to be able to track some some decent prospects. You know, I got a couple of guys that were drafted in the. In the NHL draft over the summer, they got a, uh, a transfer from Quinnipiac, who St. Cloud would have seen in the in the tournament game last year, Ty Smolanik, um, and also picked up a goaltender in the in the portal, guy from uh, Mercyhurst, Kyle McClellan. Who I would not be shocked if he we see him in one of these games put up good numbers actually in Mercyhurst, nine thirty two goals against last year, and he was their number one starter. It is Atlanta hockey, so take those numbers with a grain of salt. But Jared Moe was uh, the starter for the bulk of the year last year for them and had a decent season. You know, the Huskies, uh, that Friday game last year, saw Cameron Rowe, who is now in Western Michigan, uh, is now their goaltender, or one of their goaltenders at least. Huskies uh, chased him early in that Friday game. I think he gave up all five of the goals. And then Mo came in in relief and then also got the Saturday game. Mo was, you know, looked the better of the two goalies then. Kind of a, you know, bad fortune for him. He was a gopher recruit who transferred to Wisconsin because he was kind of stuck under Jack LaFontaine. And then obviously LaFontaine leaves middle season last year. Gophers go to the girls in four. If Mo had still been around, I'm sure he would have been the guy. But yeah. he transferred to Wisconsin, so he's stuck on a horrible Badger team while the Gophers go to the girls in four. Uh, but he, you know, he did a decent job last year: nine seventeen goals against, and you know, played started both of those Ohio State games uh, over the weekend uh, and took took obviously both losses. So I said I would not be surprised if they split the action uh, with Mo and McClellan this weekend. But, you know, didn't return a ton of a, a ton of guys. Obviously, when you're saying the sixth least scoring team from last year, it's not like they were returning a guy like Cole Caulfield. Um, you know, this Matthew D. St. Fowl. Uh, that's a, it's a French name that I can't pronounce. Uh, one of their leading scorers last year with 22 points. Uh, 22 points seems to be the, the, the top scorers that they're returning. Uh, Carson Kuhlman's on, on the point, also put up 22 points last year, and he's back. Um, Cruz Lucius, a name that we might be familiar with, uh, brother of Chaz Lucius, uh, who was with the Gophers last year, first-round pick, who then bolted, uh, turned pro uh, after the season. Ch- or Cruz Lucius was, I believe, a Gopher recruit. Not sure if they both sort of soured on Motsko, like, I'm not yep. sure if Chaz had had good things to say and so sort of dissuaded Cruz uh, from joining the Gophers as well. So uh, Wisconsin picked him up. Uh, I don't think he's as taunt or uh, touted as his brother, but still a decent prospect for them to, to come in. So, I mean, it's a, like a lot of these Big Ten teams, um, you know, young, very young. Huskies are going to have the age advantage for sure. Uh, over the Badgers, uh, but you know they got some skill guys. But it's it's going to be a lot of like lack of chemistry, especially early in the season. Here, these guys have only played one series together, so I think it's a good 
time for the Husky. We'll learn some more about the Husky. I, I think if this team is even not even, even like a step down from what last year's Huskies team was, I think this should be a sweep. Maybe I'm, yeah. maybe I'm really down on, on the Badgers and I'm just taking some small samples too much, you know, making too, too much of them. But I, I don't see much here with Wisconsin, a, a huge upgrade from last year. And we know last year was a pretty awful team. It is, you're playing in Wisconsin and, you know, playing on the road anywhere is, it, you know, different from playing at home, obviously. And it, there is some challenges there. And when it was at its peak, the Kohl Center can be a tough place to play. I think the, a lot of the shine has worn off there. And I think the fan base is becoming restless at this yeah. point. So it might be a good time to see him. Like just this, I remember last year before the Huskies got him, Michigan Tech went in there and kicked ass both nights. So you're going to get a young team that doesn't really know they don't have any meshing. You know, it's, it's still early. Like Wisconsin played decent sort of in the middle, like January or February last year. But then like once the end of the season, they really started kind of packing it in, but they, they, they found a, maybe a month there where they were playing. Okay. I don't, I don't think it's, they're not going to reach that time for a bit here. So I think the Huskies have a chance to, to come in you know, and, and do, do some damage against this Badger team. So I'm, I'm feeling fairly confident. Uh, how, how are you thinking about this series? Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel, I mean, anything less than a sweep, I think I'm going to start having a lot of questions. Um, maybe not anything less, but it's, we should be able to um, really, really lay the hammer down uh, on Wisconsin. But, you know, as he's, I also think that, you know, we're going to learn a lot about this Huskies team this weekend as well. Right. Um, You know, is, we're not going to have, you know, I think this is a good feeler weekend to see, you know, how well, um, you know, how the goalies are going to be used, how well this defense kind of locks everything down. And, you know, kind of what's going to happen with the scoring. And I, I think it, it'll give us a good feeler on, you know, how everything is progressive uh, or progressing. It sounds like Ludke is going to be out for this season. Uh, he, uh, Brett Larson was on the rink live, uh, just did a, you know, 15 minute interview. So I uh, suggest you guys go ahead and listen to that right after the pod. But um, just kind of talked about um, how, all of the major scans came back negative. So he's just kind of resting right now. So I'd be incredibly surprised um, um, if they do, uh, if he does suit up for this weekend. Um, you, you, had, no, kind of, I, I, you had, you had said earlier he was out for the season. But oh no, for this the weekend. Series. Okay. That's, that's, the series, that's what yes. I, that's what I thought. And I did not hear that interview yet. Um, so to clarify, yeah, he's not out for the season, just definitely out for the series, which is not surprising. I, if, I, if we get him before conference play, I would be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Especially like, you know, that depth on defense, you know, there's no need to rush him back. And also he's a human, <laughs> so right. we shouldn't rush people back after, after serious head injuries like that, uh, for, you know. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Lucius uh, decommitted from Minnesota about the same time as Chaz bolted to the NHL. I, I think that's correct. So I think there was something, yeah, like you said, about some kind of sound, because I remember being like, whoa, that... Uh, that that screams of dad isn't happy with how their sons are are doing just because hockey parents are like that. <laughs> that's kind of what I, uh, I took out of it. Obviously that's all alleged and I'm just a fan on the podcast. So I, I don't have any inside information on that, but that's just kind of what it sounded like. And it seems like, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. He, um, I mean, you know, Chaz, we'll see how he plays. Yeah. Chaz Lucius was a first round pick last year. And I don't believe he's starting the the season with the Jets. I think he's with their AHL team. So he might have just been a one and done guy no matter what. 
it may, very well may have been a Motsko issue as well. And obviously with the timing there with his brother's decommit does raise some eyebrows. But there is a possibility that, hey, Chaz was going to go pro, so maybe Cruz wanted to play a year with his brother. And when that was no longer a possibility, then he decided to ski down. Go to Wisconsin. <laughs> I thought for a while that he he was in the Cruz was more a, a WHL guy for some for some reason I remember I thought he was playing major juniors rather than college, but yeah maybe maybe there yeah yeah you make a good point as far as picking Wisconsin that might be a a, a middle finger type move um, uh, uh. To, to good old Bobby there so. Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if if uh, if if there's uh, any more uh, to that story, uh, emer- if that, any more of that story emerges. So, if you were to pick out one thing that kind of strikes you about this weekend, um, one thing that you're looking for or going to kind of hone in on, or even just have a question answered for this weekend, what would be kind of your number one? Well, similar to you, um, I am curious about the Huskies. Like, I, I don't feel like we, we have enough evidence about how this team is, has, is or how good they are just based on the one weekend against St. Thomas. So when I'm saying like they should sweep if, if we're talking about last year's team, but we're not talking about last year's team. I, I just don't know enough about this year's team to make the bold prediction that they're they, that they should sweep i think i'm confident that they have a good chance of doing that but i i just don't know exactly what we got with this team yet with this year's team so even if they do split i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give up on the year I, i'll at this point mm-hmm. at that point i'll just right. know more about what we got and more of what to expect going forward like if we split this weekend coming into Mankato next week, even though I don't think Mankato is as good as they were last year, I'm not going to expect more than a split next weekend, you know? So this will, it'll go a long ways as far as how I'm going to set expectations for this team. And that, that'll take a while because, you know, with the non-conference slate, I think Mankato is the best team of these four series we're going to play before we hit the conference schedule. And I don't think we're going to see, like, I don't, I don't trust St. Thomas being good enough to, to really take a ton of uh, solid evidence as far as how good St. Cloud's going to be this year based on the sure. series. Same was with Bemidji. I don't even think they're as good as they were last year and they weren't very good last year. So these next two weekends, and I, I think Mankato will be the toughest test, um, but w- I really would. I'd like to see some more offense. Um, I, I'm again expecting goaltending to be a tandem situation. One guy gets Friday and one guy gets Saturday. Probably Caster Friday and Bassey on Saturday, just based on that's how the order was the first series. Um, mostly, I'm looking for offense. You know, I don't think defense is perfect. You know, we we saw some. You know some some misplays by the by cer- certain defensemen in the first series, and obviously losing Lukey for any amount of time here is 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 a, a loss. But and and there is guys like Reiners and Wiley, you know the newer guys that and Anhorn even to to that extent that I'm excited to see how they're you know, more of their game. But I do think that. Aside from goaltending, which I still think is the biggest question mark, the offense is is going to be the most sort of that's what I'm going to look at look for as far as who's going to emerge, you know, who's going to emerge uh, as like the bottom six guys because we seem to be cycling through more than we have ice time for. I'm going to be interested in what their power play is looking like. Um, those are kind of I'm looking for you know guys like Ingram. I I still want to see some how he develops in particular. Uh, so I guess that's what I'm mostly intrigued on is, and, and I'd like to see if this top line can 
you know, look like a true top line, like a true like top NCAA line, not just like top for St. Cloud. Like if this, I think they have the potential um, to become an elite line. This would be another stepping stone to that uh, goal. Um, there really is no shortage of areas of intrigue for this team. Yeah. And so I guess I'll take all of them, but underline especially the, the, the offense and special teams. Um, I like those two areas. And then the other kind of 1A right underneath that would be how does the goaltending look? Is there going to be one guy that, that uh, definitely looks to be a step better than the other? Because if it, if it is something where we're splitting time and they're both putting up, you know, 915 plus save percentages, maybe we don't have to worry about finding a guy that emerges. But I do think that that is the ideal to have one guy kind of take the reins. I wouldn't even be shocked. I, I'm looking at like that Bemidji series to maybe get a James Gray start. I don't think he does this weekend or next weekend. I don't think he'd start him on the road. And I think with Mankato, I think you want, you don't want to, experiment with a with your third stringer quite yet but i think that bemidji series i think they want to give him time i don't think they Mm -hmm. but i think that might be the best uh, spot at least early in the season to give him a a shot so you know that's that's another question mark that's that's going to be answered eventually this this season it might not be answered to our satisfaction hopefully it is but I don't know the answer to that question yet, and we just got to watch the games to figure out what it's going to be. What What are you looking at the most? What's What's your sort of, uh, you know, most intriguing storyline or 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 you know group to watch? Yeah, my number one with the bullet is goaltending, um, and that's you know, like you said, that's our biggest question mark, and if we are able to kind of play lockdown defense against a team that we should play lockdown defense again against i you know i expect to see these goaltenders be able to stop the pucks that they can see um obviously caster didn't do that against quinnipiac and but he i thought he played very well against st thomas um made some even key saves and you know the 10 saves that he did have uh, but that's that's something that we need to make sure that you know if there's still that competition, I think both of them are going to be hungry for it, and therefore that just makes both of them play better. Which I hope that just kind of continues on throughout the season. But I I am still maybe a little bit nervous, I guess you could say. Um about caster because of that performance and hopefully that he is able to prove me wrong, but I want to see, I just want to see solid performance again from the goaltending this weekend. And I, I expect both of them to play and I want to see solid performance from both of them. So that's, that's the main thing I'm looking at. Yeah, I agree. Um, First time since what? 2012. Uh, for the Huskies in Madison, definitely the first time, or th- it'd be the first time since 2013. Uh, the, that was the last weekend of the uh, of the regular season where St. Cloud clinched the uh, the tie for first place for the McDaughton Cup. But it'll actually be the first time in the Cole Center since 2012 because they played yeah. that 2013 uh, series at the old Dane Coliseum. I think there was a basketball uh, scheduling conflict. So it's been, you know, a decade. Fun, since fun fact. I, I was at both of those games. I've, and I've never, I think I mentioned this. I've never been to a game in Madison before. Um, if I was still in town, I would definitely be going to the series just to not to check that one off the list. Check that one off. It's, that, it's, it's interesting. Cause you, like you said, it's the Cole center, it's basketball. So like, the upper ends like on on the balcony like you're not able to see the near blues line in <laughs> it's like it's like blocked up hmm. cuz you just see your own bleachers cuz it's set up for basketball 
Um, you know, obviously when I went, um, you know, in that 2013 season or I'm sorry, the, the, you know, 2011, 2012 with uh, that series, when, uh, Jared Raby scored the game winning goal in the third, <laughs> I don't, don't know how that went in, but, uh, he was able to score. <laughs> Husky's, Husky's swept that uh, series. Uh, Is that right? He did, yeah. Um, but I remember uh, years ago, and I was talking. I took a random road trip out there because one of my friends is a, is a random Wisconsin Badger fan uh, for like all sports, and it's like his secondary. He went to St. Cloud State, but it's like his secondary college hockey school, huh. and we went to a random series back in the WCHADs and I think it was it was Wisconsin I can't remember who they were playing um but it was I mean it was fun because it was a raucous atmosphere and like you said that was kind of back in their heyday of that live like their at their in-ring atmosphere and then you know with all these mediocre seasons and the conference splitting and whatnot I think a lot of it has kind of waned uh for Wisconsin since then because even even you know the games when we went there in uh, in uh, 2012 when we did sweep you know that it wasn't quite the same you know their their fans weren't nearly as in um to it and that's but um I felt a little bit bad because I really like propped up how good um that atmosphere is to Mike Lee's parents <laughs> and whatnot because I actually got a pretty good relationship with them um and it was just kind of lackluster and i'm like oh man that's i feel feel kind of dumb now yeah for years they they were the annual uh top attendance attendance team. yep and i think even last year they were under the gophers and the gophers capacity for mariucci is about six thousand less than the coal center is coal centers are around sixteen thousand for hockey and Mariucci's are on 10,000 and I think their average attendance was under 9,000 last year, uh, Cole center. So yeah, part of that is a, a, a nationwide drop in attendance. Um, but yeah. there was a lot of Wisconsin specific reasons for, for their drop. And I think the main one is just a, a lack of on ice success, a sustained on ice success. Like, two tournaments in nine years or whatever it is, it's just not going to cut oh. it for most programs, you know, name and, me a program and that, I just that goes through that and, and, and has good attendance because you, yeah. you just don't. And I, I just found the article about a, the extending of uh, Tony Granato's contract uh, through 26, 27 and uh, any, if they let him go after any season, it's a $2.4 million buyout. I'm sure that's cheap so. compared to the football coach that they just fired. I mean, based well, on the football, football brings in money though. Right. <laughs> I don't know how much the hockey program brings in money in Wisconsin as of late. So, but, yeah. And um, from yeah. one quick question, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just that we had, um, because it's in regard to the series, um, uh, basically really anyone from Wisconsin, we should fear. Like, does anybody really stick out as somebody, hey, this could be kind of a game breaker or anything along those lines? And I am struggling. Like, I just don't see it. And I'm sure there's someone that, you know, maybe. Yeah, has. I mean, I remember last year, uh, like, I, I think I remember, I should go back and listen to that episode, but I I think I remember remarking that there was just no one on the team that really stood out. Nobody if anyone, if stood anyone out. it was that Coolman's. But that was only because his name was so similar to Carson Coolman, the uh, old Duluth mm. player. It's Coolmans for Wisconsin, and it's Corson, not Carson. That's weird. Yeah. Um, but that well, was, and Coolmans is spelled some kind of. It's a little differently. Yeah, uh, but that didn't. That wasn't a standout performance based on how well he played. Although, like I said, I think he led the team in points or tied for it last year. And from the defense, that's not too bad. I guess that Cruz Lucius would be kind of interesting to watch him. A couple of other 
Roll, um, uh, roll a dice and pick a random freshman. Maybe that's yeah, what we should do. Yeah, there, you know, a couple I'm of these looking draft forward picks. to watching uh, Ben Dexheimer. That, that's <laughs> who I'm looking forward to. He, he has the potential to be a person. Yeah, or um, I was going to say you got to watch out for their leading scorer, and I've already butchered his name, Mathieu de saint Uh He's leading the team with two points. So you got to got to keep the, uh, keep an eye out for him. Um uh, Did we did we already say that they got swept by Ohio State? I think we already We already that. said that like five times. Brock yeah. Brock Caulfield on the team, brother of Cole. Turns out he's not as good as Cole Caulfield. I don't think he's put up a 10-point season yet. Uh I oh know he had 19 points last year, but that was his high water mark and this is his fifth year. So not uh not not exactly uh uh, knocking down the door for the you know in Hobie contention, um, so but they they got one in the family. God. If he wins the Hobie, we're gonna come back to this. We we, we will you eat. Win, some, we will you eat some willed crow. that to happen. Yeah, I I will eat some crow if that is the case. If Brock Caulfield <laughs> wins Hobie, I will eat my shoe. Um, that <laughs> you can stick stick me to that. I'm like Werner. I'll, I'll stick. I'll, uh, yep, exactly. Um, you know, anything else, you know, uh, hop it off Wisconsin. Cause we, we're, we're given more time than that state really deserves. Um, overall, uh, this last weekend, you know, I caught a little bit of, uh, of Mankato, uh, Minnesota state go for a series. Um, I caught a little bit about Niagara, Omaha. I don't know. Anything jump out to you? Do you want to start anywhere? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, early returns in i think your uh omaha in last place because you picked them to be eighth place correct correct not yep. looking so shabby and i'll give a i'll, I'll even give uh, miami some props i mean they won a game out in lowell which and they played fairly well they had like a lead through half of the second game there and they looked somewhat competent so uh even if omaha would have won the Saturday game. And so like both, both of those teams, Miami and Omaha got splits this weekend. I still would have given you the props for calling it with Omaha, but boy, that Saturday loss, the second loss to Niagara really stings. Uh, we're not even in conference play yet. So I guess the, the whole eighth place that that'll be figured out between those two teams or whoever is also competing for last place. But yeah, I think it's going to be a long year for Omaha. I, I think you're, you're onto something with, with that pick, uh, because what they, is, uh, what is, what does common you're, say? You're either on I'm, something or you're onto something. And, uh, I think you're onto something with, with Omaha not being very good. And yeah, what else in the conference? You had North Dakota taking care of business against Holy Cross. Um, Four to one, six nothing wins for North Dakota. No surprise there. Colorado College sweeping Anchorage. No surprise there. Western Michigan just with one game uh, and fell behind three nothing to Fair Seven State, but were able to come back in that game. And so, uh, looking for a while there, you know, three games into their season and possibly dropping games to Anchorage and Fair Seven State, but uh, yeah. You know, came back and and averted disaster uh in, in ferris uh what else denver, got, and then denver, denver takes care of business yep, they mentioned the that breaker. thought that game against notre dame was was pretty decent on friday notre dame in the third period was buzzing they had gotten it within one goal and had a power play opportunity that had some real good chances on but then they could not tie it up denver pulls away and then notre dame almost dropped it Dropped the second game they played to Air Force. They were down three goals in the third. Had to come back to tie that game uh, late and did so. A lot of uh, three-goal comebacks. Lots of three-goal comebacks. Uh, what else? Uh, anything else in the conference that I'm missing? I don't think so. There yeah, was nothing in the conference, but uh, you know, kind of the big thing I wanted to bring up was the, the new kids on the block, you know, is... Um, 
you know, Long Island, who, yep. you know, I guess it was, uh, you know, I, I guess able to crush Stonehill. But, um, you know, just kind of seeing them tie Quinnipiac. Yeah, I watched, um, I watched the end of that, the last period of that game. You know, I got out of that, but they were, were they up two to one and Quinnipiac had to tie it to no. get into overtime or? Okay. Quinnipiac got out to a two nothing lead and then it was two to one going gotcha. into the third. That's when I started watching it. And then, and then Long Island tied it late and then scoreless overtime period. Their goaltender, Long Island's goaltender played great. They, you know, and this is two weekends in a row that they've had, that they've taken, uh, you know, tournament teams from last year and teams that are coming into this year with some some high expectations in Quinnipiac and Northeastern, taking both of those teams to overtime, lost the overtime game to Northeastern, but then tied with Quinnipiac. And so they, I mean, they they, they looked competent. I mean, they, this is their third year. Um, and I'm not saying that they're going to be a tournament team but looking at their schedule, it's about, you know, their first two years was basically all on the road, just a, a smattering of, of home games. This year, though, they've got about half and half home games and away games. And they've, they play at Wisconsin, so that's two wins there. And, and yeah, well, so. it's just like we're seeing with, you know, how we're going to gauge St. Cloud based on this series. If, if Wisconsin. They play looks, Omaha, two wins there. They play at, or they host Omaha. Too. Uh, it was so long, yeah. So, but yeah, with Wisconsin, like if if Wisconsin looks as bad as we think they are, uh, that they play Wisconsin also has Lindenwood on the schedule. Uh, those aren't going to be gimmies, uh, I don't think, uh, unless they really turn things around. But yeah, I say Long Island. You know, I think there is there is an opportunity. We've seen it with Arizona state making the tournament once, and then they would have made it in the COVID year had COVID not happened. They were at least positioned in the top 10. It is possible for an independent to make the tournament. Um, and so, yeah. um, and I still think Arizona state has the best chance of that this year. Um, but maybe in you know, a year or two, Long Island might be positioned to, to uh, sniff a NCAA uh, appearance. So, uh, and, yeah, and and taking care of Stonehill, like you can see that they're they're above the the position that Lindenwood it, Lindenwood is this year, and you know Anchorage and, and St. Thomas was last year. They're they're not just a we're gonna play them and it's gonna be a six to one game. You know, they're now I think a, a team that you got to take seriously if. Yeah, if teams don't, you're going to have a lot of these eyebrow-raising sort of, ooh, Ty Quinnipiac, huh? Ooh, taking Northeastern to yeah. overtime. Oh. And the more that we get those, then it's like February, and we're saying, God, why is LIU 12 in pairwise? Um, <laughs> so uh, that's uh, keep a pin in that. What a world that would be. Exactly, exactly. Did, um, did, speaking of Lindenwood, you know, their series against uh, Michigan actually had a little bit of intrigue. Uh, Lindenwood jumping out to a 2 nothing lead, uh, ended the first up 2-1 to one before Michigan finally decided to, you know, actually play. Um, but even on, even on Saturday's game uh, as well, that was a close one. And had the so, lead there, too. Uh, scored the first goal. So they had leads in both games. So, I mean, you know, maybe Linden would, oh, man, that would have been just great, just just beating Michigan if they would have, but clearly. Uh, Arizona State uh, was able to split with uh, Bemidji, but I guess the bigger note is that uh, Arizona State is no longer winless in Minnesota. I think they went 17 games without a win in uh, the state of Minnesota. I guess I did not Uh, see that, but. Yeah, I, that makes sense. St. Cloud beat them their first year here. Um, the Gophers beat them that COVID year where Arizona State was playing the Big Ten schedule. They didn't never beat them there. So yeah, that makes sense. I, I guess I didn't, I uh, wasn't aware of that streak. But uh, congrats to them uh, on breaking the the Minnesota Schneid. 
Did you see, uh, so did you watch any of that Mankato Gopher series? I watched a little bit. I watched basically the third period of that Saturday game. I didn't see any of the Friday game. Uh, but Yeah, I watched, uh, yeah, I watched pretty much the end of Saturday's game. Yeah, kind of just curious about how, how good Mankato's going to be just because that's a team that's next week for the, for the Huskies. Uh, and you know, I, I got a little bit of a scouting report from, from my father who watched the game. It's kind of a rarity now, but he said that he found that, that Fox, Plus, Fox 9 Plus is uh, they must be playing Mankato games as well as St. Cloud games, because that's how he watched that Saturday yep. game. And yep, that's how I was able to watch it, too. He thought the, thought the uh, Gophers looked very young and selfish, I think was his, uh, was his term. Like, they, they, weren't, uh, they weren't really meshing as a unit yet. They were just kind of taking, taking shots willy-nilly, weren't setting stuff up. That's, that's the report from my one jaded uh, uh, Gopher <laughs> hockey fan in my life. Well, I mean that that third period uh, there on on Saturday was just dominated by Mankato. Uh, you know, Minnesota was able to score a goal, but I think they only had like three or four shots, maybe five. So they, it's it, it seems like all of Minnesota's offense has really just been Jimmy Snuggerud <laughs> and yeah. and nobody else. Four four goals on the weekend for him. Cooley had a good series of the first series against Lindenwood, but relatively quiet in this Mankato series. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, both teams, I think are, I mean, obviously both teams on St. Cloud's schedule. So uh, intriguing to watch those, those teams from that perspective and, you know, Gophers have another season where they, their expectations are very high and sure. They'll probably fall short of those expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing everything we do, but, uh, it's, it is, you know, it is kind of fun just to watch the Minnesota but, like, teams go at it. You know, there are some times when you're watching like two top five teams playing and you're like, there is a reason these two teams are in the top five and maybe it's because it's early in the season. Yeah. I think you that's know, given, granted, that's given too much credence to the Astro poll. Yeah, that's probably true. It's the poll that what what did you uh, say in the green room that Omaha had Omaha a vote? still has a vote even after the Niagara uh, getting swept to Niagara. Somebody's someone has also been giving Niagara. someone's been giving Brown a vote. Um, you know, Brown hasn't been good in at forever. Like, well, not only that, Brown that by that logic, Brown's going to get a vote until what mid November. <laughs> It's well, at least until they, they start playing. Um, yeah, yeah I did check. They start... they, they've gotten one vote in each of the first three polls. So I'm guessing it's the Brown beat writer um, or maybe their coach. I don't know who exactly uh, votes on these. I think it's writers. So, yeah, watch out for Brown this year, folks. Watch out for Brown. They, they might Let's do see, something. I, I don't think they've ever made so... the tournament, ever. Brown makes the tournament, and who's going to make? Uh, who's going to get the Hobie? <laughs> I already forgot what who you said was going to get the whole. Oh, uh, um, Brock Caulfield. Brock Caulfield. Uh, yes. There we go. Yes. First uh, brother tandem to get the Hobie, right? That's right. So. Um, oh. Um. And this is another. Uh, you know, it's an it's a weekend in October, so you know what that <laughs> means. Penn State was at home against an Atlantic hockey team. Ooh, um, there we go. Canisius in this case, and uh, Penn State was able to to sweep them. Um, I did see that they are actually, they're going on the road in non-conference twice. They're going all the way across, you know, three counties to go to Mercyhurst <laughs> um, for a game, I think this weekend. And then they're going to RIT, like in December. And, and that then, Mercyhurst is a home and home. Both, so yeah, is RIT home, home too, um, but then then the rest of it it's it's all <laughs> Atlantic hockey and all at home, and both of those <laughs> uh, Mercyhurst and RIT are both uh, Atlantic hockey too. Do they literally have all? They don't play a. I don't think they've got anyone else on the schedule except Atlantic hockey. Alaska, teams. 
They got allowed, and they're not. They don't even have a conference. So they don't even have a conference. The only conference and, that they're and, playing. And St. Thomas. Oh, they are playing St. Thomas. Not like that's like uh, a big challenge for them, but okay, yeah. So they are playing St. Thomas. Again, I'm uh, I'm looking which, at college hockey news. So and so, yep. who knows no, if it's you're right? right? Because no, that's right. Because they it played, says they played that weird series at St. Thomas last year. I was like, well, how did they get on the schedule to go to St. Thomas? But then it was I figured it out that they were playing the Gophers like Thursday, Friday of the following week. So they were just they kind of lumped the travel together. They played yeah. St. Thomas. And it was like right around Thanksgiving. So they played St. Thomas on the weekend and then just stuck around town, added it to their road trip. So I don't even know if that counts really as a true you know, no. non-conference road I'm series. Not counting. Plus it's against St. Definitely Thomas. not counting it for the bit. <laughs> right. Uh, well, yeah, the bit still is they have never, and will be the case this year based on their non-conference schedule this year, have never played an NCHC team um, off anywhere except neutral ice since they've become D1. Um, and, and, yeah, so, that, I mean, they played a couple of teams in the NCAA tournament. Then they played North Dakota last year in the uh, Hall of Fame game down in Nashville. And then they played, uh, I think Robert Morris had a tournament that they played Western Michigan in one of those games at the Robert Morris facility. So they have never played a true road game or a true home game uh, against an NCHC team. And this is the 10th year of the NCHC. And obviously, you know, Motsko, uh, when he was still with St. Cloud, had, he was on record saying, we asked, we've, we've tried to get him on the schedule. And they've said no. So it's not like teams aren't reaching out to them. This is all by yeah. choice for Penn State to play this kind of Charmin schedule. So it is what it is. I mean, Omaha has been trying to do that too, or this kind of load up on, the, on a soft non-conference schedule. And, you know, not being able to make the tournament last year was because they didn't really have any good non-conference wins because they didn't schedule anybody. It's worse this year that they can't even beat the uh, – they can't even beat the uh, the softies, the purple the eagles. So, uh, not a good sign for Omaha. And uh, yeah. and but congratulations to Penn State. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm looking at Penn State's schedule on CHN, uh, which says St. Thomas on the 20th, the 21st, and the 22nd. So a three game series, apparently, according to this schedule. So. Yeah, that's that's wrong. I I swear, college like okay, I pay for the app for no ads and the premium. I like I just it's amazing how much I can how many times I pay four dollars for me to just give wrong information. Wait, you you, <laughs> you paid for the CHN app? Yes. I because I never did that. Actually, my app says they're playing St. Thomas on October twentieth at four. And then they're playing on October 22nd or October 21st at four against St. Thomas. And then they're also playing on October 21st against St. Thomas at nine. So they're playing a double header uh, against St. Thomas. I, I didn't know they did that in hockey, the, the, uh, the... but, but they, they are, I guess it's maybe we'll give uh, Godowski some more credit. You know, they're scheduling double headers. See, exactly. That's you, you, you drag them through the mud for, for the Canisius of the world. And you don't even know the perils of the double header. <laughs> no, but like on your app, if you go to like stats and whatnot, does it say to pay for the app or am I just randomly giving $4 for wrong information this whole time? I think you're randomly giving $4 for, Incorrect or for for the same information that I have here. I got Ryan Kier, Kerwin has got three goals on the year for Penn State. I'm looking at that right oh, now. Son of a... That that might be wrong. I don't know. Ryan Kerwin <laughs> might not exist. I mean that. I mean the information might still be wrong. You got they have point Ashton there. Calder on their team. He played for North Dakota last year. I didn't know that he transferred. I didn't know that he had another year left. Actually, but the things you learn in the CHN app. Yeah, I didn't know if there was any other really I don't know. results, I guess the of, main, results of note from last weekend. The main story of all of this is I miss college hockey stats. Stats. net. I mean, we that's... Do. I don't understand why. Like, how can we get that back up and running? Like, we... I just want some, some site to just give me correct information. 
Like yeah. the, the, the CHN, their their website and their app, like these schedule issues are. They still, I think they still have the St. Cloud series on Thursday and Friday against Wisconsin at 11 p.m. Like, just give me the right dates and the right times. And it's been updating fairly decently with the scores on the game days, but they just got a couple of bugs to work out. Well, I think they had the wrong, they had a wrong score of the St. Cloud game. They double counted a goal, I think. I remember for a while it said that was a four to one victory. Oh yeah, I think I remember seeing that too. And so, yeah. and I think that last week I, I don't know if it was my problem or maybe I was just trusting the these uh, the CHN or whatever box score I saw. But I think I was shortchanging Dylan Anhorn a point. I, I kept saying he had four points last weekend, but looks like he had five. So, but I think that might have been what was double counted. So I think he's still. I don't. know. Like, he, they, and that's the thing. I thought is that was, we shouldn't question right. whether or not we have the right stats. Right. It's mind boggling. And apparently, I think and us all show of these, now is just so terrible to look at. And, and I think what it was when last year's season started, and that was the first year that C, that college hockey stats had not been updated, stopped updating their site. I think they were like CHN was getting all their stats from college hockey stats. So yeah. I, I think that's kind of the reason that all these other sites are affected and have bad information is because that system, which was like one guy doing that one guy for like 20 years. And when he decided, you know what? I got better stuff to do. We are all, we're the victims because we are just yeah. in a flood of uh, misinformation now. So I, I just, just give me the, just give me the basic, just give me the facts and, and Help don't, me. don't lie to me. CHM. <laughs> Help me, college hockey stats. You're my only hope. Yeah. Any uh, any series other than obviously the Wisconsin St. Cloud series that are you, that you're looking forward to uh, this coming weekend? We've got some. Um, well, I'll I'll look at the schedule, but I can't I guarantee that it's going to be correct. Because I, 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 I know there is some Thursday Friday games because they were talking about it on the streams last week. So. I, these like the uh, Michigan State is hosting Mass Lowell. That is a, fri- a Thursday Friday series, and that's not an error on the CHN app. And I believe that's the same for Western Michigan and Bowling Green. They're doing a home and home, uh, and that looks to be Thursday Friday. The reason that a lot of these schools do this early in the season is because they don't want to play on Saturday because that's when their football team plays. So, like Michigan is playing BU. Should be a good series, but they're doing they're doing third or uh, Friday Sunday because obviously Michigan's got a football game on Saturday and they don't want to they don't want to back up or have the same. And is that as, is that Michigan Penn State too on Saturday? I mean, that's going to be a kind of a oh football big is it? Football. Yeah, that would be a, that'd be a good a good game. So uh, yeah, I, that's why a lot of you know Gophers will do that sometimes too, where they just don't want to yeah. play. A Saturday hockey game. And well, yeah, for Mariucci and Huntington Bank, too. Right, it's right here, parking it. lot. Yeah. I don't know so. where like uh, Yost is in comparison to the football stadium, but you got like 100,000 people go to the football stadium. So I uh, can't imagine that that would really work out logistically to have the hockey game going on at the same time. So probably smart there. Um, yep. Well, if you paid for um, Flow Sports for the month, um, you know, Duluth Mankato. I mean, that sh- yep. jumps out to me right away. Both at Mankato, uh, correct? Both at Mankato. Yep. So yeah, I was um, I was trying to milk as then, much as I can out of that app because I was watching some of that that Air Force Notre Dame game was on on Saturday. Even checked out the Bowling Green Michigan State game. I liked the color combos uh, in that game. Is a aesthetically pleasing series. Was it um, a color on color game? Not the game that I saw, but but Bowling Green Bowling Green was pl- was wearing colors at home, so they were doing the orange jerseys, and then Michigan State was like the white on the road. It's kind of like how the NHL does it, um, mm-hmm. and so it was just a, I just watched like the last five minutes of that and you know, enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I I want more color on color. Like I always hope it, that every this time should do that. Play. I like it. Yeah. Like anytime, like Huskies play Colorado College, I want Huskies in red, Colorado College in yellow. That was another good 
uh, that, that's a, that was another good aesthetically pleasing game to watch. Um, yeah. Cause CC was wearing their, their golds on at home. I think on Saturday, I don't try to remember. Yeah, I don't think they that's, did it on, but, but then Anchorage nope. they're they got that. A, that's what that. Well, hold on one second. Yeah. Cause that's what Colorado college is going to do this year is that if they win at home on, it's, it's kind of like the North Dakota business suits, but not like <laughs> not as stupid as that. N- not as stupid as that. Yeah. Um, so it's just like when you're going for the sweep at home, you're going to wear the golds. Really? So I, I hope. We're but I was a little see- disappointed that Anchorage, uh, the jersey they were wearing on Friday, they did not have the logo, the, the Seawolf. They just had like Alaska Anchorage in lettering. Oh, that's they, did, they didn't have the uh, Seawolf. <laughs> on there but they still had kind of the flashy green and yellow i still like the the color combination even though i was a little disappointed yeah. in the actual jersey but uh but yeah it's always good to to check out the new duds uh from some of these teams but, but um the other one uh the, um quinnipiac in north dakota um yeah. is is going to be kind of the other match that one i can watch so. Yeah, at at North Dakota, they played out there last year, and then obviously it's going to be at coming coming west this year. And we had mentioned this in the green room that Schlossman seemed like his pick a, his pick to click this year is Quinnipiac because he did some sort of preseason top twenty uh, that he posted, and Quinnipiac was his number one team. And uh, I did see that the Yustro poll had one single first place vote for Quinnipiac last week. Did not get it this week though. Because of that, I'm guessing because of that tie against Long Island, um, and I'm assuming that Schlossman was the guy to to pick the number one, you know, have the number one vote for Quinnipiac. We saw how well he that tried, worked. He for tried him to last go back year. to the well. He 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 got too full of himself. Tried to be go back to the well and doesn't. Uh... I'm almost glad that that they lost or they tied that game against Long Island, and he had to sacrifice the uh, the bit there because he'd be really conflicted this weekend, like. Who do I really cheer for here? My hometown team, the, the team that uh, I get paid to cover, or the team that I'm going all in on, trying to parlay year two of, you know, my you know, Jimmy the Greek magic of saying that you got to pick my team at the beginning and we're going all the way, baby, because that's what he did with Denver last year. Uh, so something yeah. we'll have to give, I guess, this weekend. But it should be a good matchup. Uh, and and I'm saying that Quinnipiac tie against Long Island is not going to look that bad because watch out for the Sharks. Watch out! Watch out for the Sharks. Um, any idea on maybe Schlossman's doing a rope a dope and he was the Brown voter? <laughs> <laughs> we got to stuff out who this Brown voter is. <laughs> if they are not affiliated with the brown program i am going to be very intrigued uh, <laughs> you know it's this one stoner reporter is just like hey guys i got i got i got a funny prank brown <laughs> Bra- brown they actually name a steam after a color dude it's like maybe i like i'm That's... gonna take team red actually you could you could have brown Pass the Funyuns. <laughs> I think that's our uh, best bit. We're done. I think that's our best bit ever. Um, uh, one question uh, from Dan Jacobson, uh, who I guess uh, would assume is going to Mankato, asked me the best place to eat in Mankato. And I will tell you the truth. I have been to two restaurants, I think, in Mankato that wasn't the Mankato Mall food court when I was in <laughs> high school because that was the closest mall I went to. Um, uh, it was a Buffalo Wild Wings, and it was a bar bowling alley that I got uh, served when I was underage. <laughs> uh, so we hung out there. And... Well, that's, uh, I have that... not ate anywhere else. So, I mean, by default, I guess it's the Buffalo Wild Wings, but I do not know any other places. In, I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I ate Mankato. there a couple of times. I, I just I'm not good at uh, not good at remembering at the, names. the Midwest Wireless Center. 
Yeah, it would have been right yeah. around there too, like that downtown area. There's some good spots. I think there's one like that, the 700 Club, or it's something with like a number in the title. I thought was okay. Um, I'm just I'm not good with the names. Like he was, I'm was in contact with someone. I'm going to go to the one of the Denver games with someone that lives uh, lives in the suburbs of Denver, and he's like we're trying to find a, a, a spot to to meet up or you know happy hour or early dinner on that Saturday game. And it's like I know I, I I went there years ago, and there was a place that was somewhere near that. I, just, I don't I'm not good with the names of the restaurants as it turns Pub out. Pub Five Hundred. That's probably what it was then. Yeah. The 700 Club. Isn't well, that like a religious, like a yes. evangelist? <laughs> yeah, it's yes, close. That's... Yeah, the number and club kind of sounds like a restaurant. But yeah, go yeah, ask, Ooh. go to the 500 restaurant and ask for the uh, Pat Robertson special. And you'll, you'll be, set <laughs> yeah, up, be set up there. Was that? Or, okay. really, or was for he? Some... Yeah, okay. I don't know if yeah, he was. I, I don't know if Pat Robertson was seven hundred club, or he might have been the PTL club. Praise the Lord! I don't know. I don't know why I know all this, but uh, I don't know. Like my well, my mind went to Lou Dobbs because I think he looks like Lou Dobbs, yeah, but he's like an older Lou. Like whatever you said, Robertson or whatever, that sounds right. I think that's yes. I think Pat Robertson is is a televangelist or was. He's probably not around anymore yet. We're probably showing our age here, you know. It's the, we don't, uh, I don't update the references. I'm sure there's a, a more up to date TD TD Jakes. There is a there is a modern day televangelist for you. Um, see, I, I stay in the game. So it's all that like late night channel surfing that you get the uh, the televangelist uh, channel. Uh, I guess that's well, where it's seeped into well, my who's, subconscious. Who's the one guy that's terrible? Well, there's uh, well, there's Joel Osteen. There we you go. You know that we're uh, we're we're really struggling here to finish off the podcast if we're listing off televangelists. God. Um, uh, there yeah. was one back in the day. That hey, was... fun fact: uh, Pat Robertson's still alive. Is he? He's ninety-two. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, that's uh, okay, we're gonna end it there before I. I think that's the international sign on. sign to to end it. <laughs> to end it. We should. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll be back uh, next week to recap. Hopefully, a sweep. Um, if not, if it's not a sweep, then um, it's gonna be an eventful podcast. So yes, let's um, let's hope that we uh, force uh, Badger fans to find some religion. After, after this weekend here he goes until next time go huskies woo